Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us today. My name is Max from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library and in today's Tinker Shop we are going to learn how to make some 3D printed cookie cutters. Should be a lot of fun. The whole interesting thing with this Tinker Shop is that it's a dual process project. We're going to start with a vector file created in Inkscape and then convert that into a 3D printed object using Tinkercad. So a little bit more complexity perhaps because we're using more than one tool at a time, but the result is pretty useful and it's a skill that you can use for all kinds of interesting projects I'm sure you will think up. So in Inkscape, um, the first thing we're gonna do is leave Inkscape and um, look for an image online. And so you can use whatever web browser you fancy this is Firefox. If you don't have Inkscape installed, of course, their website is inkscape.org. You can get the latest version there. And a heads up, a new version 1.0 is coming soon, and that's the version I'm using today. When you are ready to look for an image, load up your search engine of choice, whether Google or DuckDuckGo. And what I'm going to what I am going to look for is something that's actually pretty simple. I want to find a silhouetted image that's just one big block of content. And so for my cookie cutter, let's say a heart silhouette. And I'm actually going to add some additional um, context here. I want to find a public domain image if possible. So I hit enter to search. And of course, flip over to our images tab. Lots of great hearts from publicdomainpictures.net. So I feel like that's a good um, candidate here for our project. And so again, we're looking for a silhouette, a pretty simple image. Something like these hearts here wouldn't work. There's too much interior detail for the kind of cookie cutter that I have in mind, which will just be a simple cut shape outline. Um, this anatomical heart actually might work. That's not too bad there. I'm going to stick with this more iconographic version though. So I'm going to right click on that and just copy that image for now. And then head back over into Inkscape. In Inkscape, lucky us, um, we just have to right click and paste the image. As we often say in these workshops, the image you've pasted in is perfect, if not for a few unfortunate details. Um, chief among them is, if we zoom into this graphic, we can see that it is very pixelated. In a lot of our processes, the pixelization is a nuisance. In this case, it's not going to work at all. We need to convert this away from the bitmap graphic it currently is and change it into a vector. So I'm going to zoom out of there. Pressing the number 3 on my keyboard will zoom out just to show the graphic as is. Under the Path menu in Inkscape, you can head to the trace bitmap item and that will load up the trace bitmap window here. Your trace bitmap win window might look different depending on your version of Inkscape. In any case though, for an image like this, all the default settings for brightness cutoff are perfect. And so we can just hit OK and see that almost nothing happens at first. And so a new version of the graphic was generated in place, meaning that it's right on top of the other one. And so if you click and drag, the top image, the image you're actually able to click on is the one we want. We can tell that it's the one we want because if you can see here, it is see-through where before it was white in the background. And so there, there's an obvious white background. Here there's none. And also Inkscape does some nice things for us. If you click on the image in the status bar, it'll tell you if it's either a path, which is what we want, we would like it to be a path, versus the original graphic, which is a plain old image. So we can delete that image. And our new vector path is pretty snazzy, pretty ready to go. What we want to do now is make a few decisions in terms of the size of the cookie cutter and then go through the steps in order to produce an outline suitable for converting into a 3D object. So first things first, how big a cookie cutter should it be? When you click on the image or the graphic, there are a number of details near the top of the screen in Inkscape. The coordinates are here. 
and the size is here in millimeters currently. I'm going to switch that to IN for inches for a moment. By clicking the lock box, I can make sure those dimensions scale proportionally so I don't get kind of a squished heart or something like that, because that'd be sad. So let's just say on the short side, I only want to make a three inch heart. Then it's three and a quarter inches on the other side. Not too bad. If you don't get this part exactly right, you can always change it later when we convert it to a 3D object in Tinkercad, as long as you don't make it too much smaller from where you started. So in any case, it's three inches or about 76 millimeters. From here, we want to right click on a color in this bottom bar and set a stroke. The stroke is the outline around the graphic and the fill is the center. So I'm gonna left click this little none box and that'll set the fill to none. So now our heart only has a stroke, which is pretty handy because again, we wanna cut this heart out of some cookie dough perhaps. And so a sharp outer line is exactly what we need. Of course though, some modifications to be made need to be a little, needs to be a little thicker to be useful for us. And so under the object menu, we're going to open up fill and stroke. The key criteria for us here is the stroke style. We're not too much concerned with the stroke paint. That'd be again, the color it doesn't really matter for us, but stroke style is key in millimeters. We need a good, healthy cutting width. Let's say three and a half. Seems a little chunky, maybe just two and a half. Sure. This is going to be our cut line here. That's going to slice our cookie dough, hopefully. But from there, we need to do one extra thing with an Inkscape. Um, a 2.5 millimeter line 3D printed is pretty flimsy. That's not quite adequate for what we want. And so we're going to right click on that and make a duplicate. So we have a second object here, two hearts made completely of strokes. The idea from this point is the one of these hearts needs to be chunkier by a pretty wide margin. Let's say five millimeters across. Even chunkier. Let's go full 10. And this is what's going to be what we hold on to when we're trying to press the cookie into dough or the cookie cutter into dough. Just for the sake of visibility, I'm going to turn this cookie cutter red. Whoopsie, right click, set stroke red, and get rid of that fill again. And so the idea is that these will be set in the center of each other. This one will slice into the material, where the larger one will be what we hold on to. In order to make this heart workable in Tinkercad, we need to take the stroke that we've created and turn it into a path. When we bring a stroke into Tinkercad, it'll just see that you wanted the outline and it'll automatically fill it in again, which is not what we want anymore. We want to make it a nice sharp outline. And so with the object selected, we're going to go to the path menu and turn that stroke into a path. I'll do that to this first one and we can see the difference between the two. So when, the, when we've done that, if I double click on this image, we can see that it now has a two-sided shape here. And so the other one is only a single line that we've given a width to in the stroke style pane, where the one that we've converted the stroke into a path now has two sides, meaning that this is actually now a fill. If we give this a stroke, just for demonstration, we can see that there's now an outline around it. If I make that a really thin stroke there. So what was once a stroke became the path, and that's what we wanted all along. So I'm gonna get rid of that stroke now. And then as you might uh, have guessed, we need to do the same thing to the other one. And so under the path menu, turn that stroke into a path. And then just to demonstrate again, we can see this is now a two-sided shape. So we're going to export these one at a time. I'm going to temporarily delete 
one of them and then just save this as going to call that heart base that's our bigger one going to go back in time by undoing delete this one save this one as heart outline and save that SVG from here we can begin the journey of converting this two-dimensional plane into a 3D object. And for that, we're heading back to our web browser and loading up Tinkercad. And so, of course, if you don't have a Tinkercad account, please feel free to make one. There are free accounts and you can make all sorts of hilarious 3D objects that you can maybe take a gander at here. We're gonna create a new design And so this whole project really relies on a nice feature in Tinkercad where we can import a 2D graphic. So we can import STL files, which are 3D files, OBJ files, which are 3D files, and SVG files, which are two-dimensional, which is what we just saved. And so, of course, the next step is to find your file wherever you've saved it to, and then click and drag it into the Import Shapes box or use the Choose File selector. And so I'm going to just click and drag my heart base into the choose a file box. And we only want this to be centered on the art. So we're going to import that. So we have a pretty good heart base. Probably doesn't need to be a centimeter tall. Bring that down a bit to, let's say, four millimeters, pretty rigid. And we will repeat that process for our other object, the heart outline. And again, we want to make sure it's centered on the art so that only the art comes with us. Not too shabby. We can use the built-in tools in Tinkercad to align our shapes. And that is it. That is functionally a cookie cutter as is. We have our sharp -er protruding section, a place for us to hold on to. And if you're as paranoid as I am with these kind of things, we can maybe just add one more little kind of strength bar across the surface. I'm gonna put this across here and then only make this the height of our background shape. Make sure it goes all the way across, of course. Looks like it does. And then just select the whole thing in Tinkercad by clicking and dragging the selection box and group it together. So from here on out, we can export this as an SDL file and then prepare it for 3D printing. To begin the export process, click on the export button near the top right corner and select the STL file, which is our standard 3D printable file. It will prepare the model and give you the opportunity to save it. And that's how you can use Inkscape and Tinkercad to create a file for a 3D printed cookie cutter. Thanks for Well done. Wait a minute. We're not done yet. We gotta make some cookies.
And that's how you make a 3D printed cookie cutter. Thanks for joining us. I hope to see you next time on the next Tinker Shop from the Insta Gear Lab and Library.